Hi guys and welcome back to the video, to the channel. Uh, today we will continue to talk about our discussion from yesterday or from the last video. Last video we talked about uh, the first part of the IoT framework which is broadcasting data to the cloud. And today we're going to continue to work with how do you actually uh, view this data or process this information uh, in the IoT client. So let's recap what we what what happened in the last video. So this is the program that I created. I did some house cleaning a little bit to make it more presentable. So I added my uh, this box here, which contains information about the program, its purpose, uh, why is it here, and contact information. It's a good practice if you have a program uh, quite big, uh, or you know any program that you're gonna think is gonna go online or even anywhere, right? To have this information box so that in case uh, people uh, would like to communicate with you. Then I just, basically the program is now divided into two main parts, setup as well as the actual code. And in the setup, I made some adjustments and updates compared to the version from last time. So this is obviously import VP, import time, even though I actually don't use sleep anymore in this program, but I left it there for legacy just in case. So this is the timer value. Um, a small adjustment in the, in the last program, I called this bar variable water height. Now I call it water level. Just a small adjustment, just for clarity. Same thing for maximum level. Now, last time it was called maximum height, and now it's called maximum level. And this is the gate status. Uh, last time there was a... Now, right here, it looks like we have two statements, not one. Uh, the purpose of this will be clearer in, 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 in a minute. But for now, I made two statements. Uh, one for when the water level is exceeding and the other one when it's within limits. Then this is the sensor data, uh, the data set representing the sensor data or the simulated sensor data. Uh, obviously in the real program we would have actual sensor data, but for now we're just going to have to work with simulated data. Second part will be the program, and the program has two main functions. One is the actual main code and the other one is the IoT function. So let's talk about the main program in a minute. I also made some adjustments here, and I'm going to give you a minute to take a look at what I did and then try to figure out the changes yourself. So I suggest you pause right now, take a look at my code, and then try to learn or figure out what I have done or changes that I've made to the program before I explain it. It's a good practice that you're able to read program and understand the code yourself rather than uh, hear the explanation. So I'm going to give you a second to pause and and what and trying to figure it out yourself okay so now the what I did was I just reorganized the program a little bit to make it more readable so first of all I put this uh, section here uh, we're gonna simulate or imagine that this is a sensor value when in reality we're just going to the loop to the to the array here and grab the data from there second part is what we do with the value is we essentially use the sensor values to automate or set other components or other values so if the water level is greater than the maximum level, uh, open or close the gate. Uh, by the way, this logic right here, why should I close the gate? Should be open. This is up to you. But for this program or for these purposes, we're going to accept this real situation that when the water level exceeds the level, we're going to close the gate. Then uh, last time this was called statement. So I call it now unit statement. And it's going to, in this case, when the water exceeds the level, it's going to equal to statement one. And the statement one is this one right here. What's the purpose of this? Why move around? Just for clarity. I didn't like the statement was here. It's quite lengthy. And I like my code to be organized. Uh, second thing was the F statement. Last time we had a print statement here and a print statement here. Is that right? Uh, if you remember, uh, it looked like something like this. Uh, we had a print statement here. And... This part right here was here. Is that right? If you remember that? And we had another print statement also here. And I actually don't like to put, uh, if you look at the code right now, if you look at these two, right, you will see that uh, I don't like the fact that you have two print statements in the F statement. I would like to put the print statement outside. But if I actually did that, if I just put it outside, then the print statement is not the same. So you're going to end up with a situation. Um, let's get back to that a little bit. 
so if I decided to put it outside, so I'm just going to take it and put it here. So here's one, and here's the second one. And uh, look at the fact that we have two slightly different print statements. You know what I mean? So one with the gate closed and one with the gate open. But then the rest of the line is almost the same, water level, string, and gate closed. And or gate open. So instead of having to have two print statement, I decided only to change this part here. I call it gate status text, and change it here, and then use it. So rather than having two print statement, I create basically one print statement, which is at the end, and then this part of the print statement will be will be taken from here. So it's going to be set here, and it's going to be set here, and then it's going to be added here. So uh, just a little bit of clarity, just for you to organize your code better for you for your own cases uh, comments as well to clear or explain what everything there's no comments here because these are replicas of these two or repeat of these two so what's going on here is that based on the value of the sensor if the water is exceeding the level we're gonna close the gate we're gonna adjust the statement and we're gonna actually adjust this local statement as well and if the water level was within limits, which is in the other condition here, so the gate will be open, use statement 2, and set gate open here. All right, so this is the F statement here. And then what we're going to do next is, um, yeah, let's just clean up a little bit. Yeah. So this was the second part, which is use the sensor data to automate other components. Then we have here display, local display. This one here is for you. When you run the program, you can see the data on your on your uh, terminal. If you don't have this print statement, the program will be blank, and it will appear like it's doing nothing. So that's why you need a local print statement to know what's going on. And finally, broadcast the information to the cloud, like we did before. Again, I adjusted those names compared to the last program. This was what the height. Uh, yeah, this was the same gate status, but this was statement. I decided to call it unit statement. And again, I make this small mistake of using capital letters. Uh, it's not a mistake. My program works fine even with a capital letter. But then it's not a good practice. I don't know why it's a convention not to use capital letters in the beginning of variable names. And um, I think I'm using it somewhere here. Yeah, no, it's just in that main program. So yeah, so basically, um, so basically, yeah, unit statement, unit statement, unit statement. So that's essentially what's going on. So now that we're done with the main code, now let's take a look at the updated function. Nothing actually updated other than the variable name. So this is the update IoT. It takes the water level, the status, and the statement. So let's go to that other function. And here we go, level, status, statement. So water height, level, gate status, status, and the unit statement, statement. And we construct this dictionary right here, and then we brought, publish it using Tweepy. So this is the same name variable, and this is the dictionary. And let's run it. So if I run this program now, uh, where's the compiler? Okay, if I compile, yep, successful, and then I run it, it works. So what a level gate open. And if I take a look at uh, the IoT client, you can see that it's actually, in fact, is broadcasting. So 3.3, so this is going to turn into 3.3. Yes, that's relatively fast. Cool. Uh, oh yeah, a small, a small adjustment is that I disabled the sleep function right here. So not even 20 seconds or 0.2 seconds, I decided to make it no sleep at all, just keep running. Because there is already a delay in the internet thingy, so there's no need to add more delays. Okay, so now it's 4.7, the next shot will be 5 point something. So this is going to go red, this is going to go switched off, and this is going to turn into exceeding limits. There's a delay because of the internet. It takes time for the from the thing to broadcast to the client. And here we go. So exceed limit, closed, closed, and here we go. So this is exactly what we did last time. So now in this video, we're going to actually do this part. We're going to actually design this from scratch and then show how this works. But before we get to that, I want to actually talk about the clients a little bit more. So this is, we are here now. We have the information. It's already in the cloud. So we need to display it. So we need to actually do some work. But before we actually get to that, I would like to actually talk a bit more about clients or IoT clients. And the IoT clients in general, there are three types. Uh, you have IoT clients or, well, first of all, what's an IoT client? IoT client essentially, it's a, it's a web application or application. 
could be uh, uh, on the PC or on a desktop, or it could be on an app. So that's why it's called a client. Could be a web application, could be uh, on a tablet, could be on anywhere, as long as it's a device or it's a program that you use to, to get some information through the internet. Web application to view, interact with IoT data. This IoT data we received from the thing or from the device. Okay, fine. So there are actually three types of IoT clients. I don't have this in my slides because of the changes to the course, so you might want to... I'm going to give you a moment to pause and then write this, these things down. So the first type of client is uh, for remote monitoring only. Uh, in remote monitoring, uh, the, the purpose of the client is to view the data, nothing else. It's exactly what we have here. So in this client, as you can see, we only can watch information, but we cannot do anything. We cannot interact with the device from here. We just watch. And although this is only this is the only purpose of the IoT um, monitoring, it's just that its purpose is really good for uh, sometimes, it's, as the as the name implies, to remotely monitor a device. You are unable to be there with the device or with the local location of the device, so remote monitoring will be very very useful. Okay, what's the other purpose? Well, the other purpose is remote control and control. Now, you see, this one is, uh, remote controlling is obviously, uh, allows you not only to view the information, but allows you to control the device from here. Imagine that you're gonna have a button or something to do with the mouse or with your fingers by tapping on the app or something like that. That allows you to actually send remote commands to the device. So it will include uh, modules or to or user interface modules. Yeah, user interface modules to to send remote commands to the device, and this essentially allows you to do the reverse. See, if you think about here, right now the arrow goes in this way, so the information goes here. So this is remote monitoring. But if the client has the user interface to allow you to touch it or to, to press a button or mouse, use whatever, or slide, then this will work the, the opposite. The information will be captured from here and then sent to the device. Of course, the third type of IoT remote client essentially is the mix, which is a mix of both. Most likely, the remote mode controlling also contains monitoring, so there is not much difference between these two. There's, you can never find a remote controlling IT client that doesn't have monitoring. You cannot control something without viewing the information, but just for organization's sake, we'll just call it three times. Okay, so now, now that we have the client, the first one we're going to be doing right now is obviously remote monitoring. In fact, I will be focusing on monitoring in throughout this course. I'll leave the controlling for you and uh, uh, for your personal life. But uh, I'm also going to talk about, before actually we go and talk about, uh, do the actual programming, um, let's talk about uh, how the remote control or the remote monitoring works. You've already worked with this before. In the remote monitoring, or the remote monitoring process really, what happens, what are the components? First, you're gonna start with the device itself, the thing, right? The, you know, the controller, right? Device, capture data, and then broadcast. Is that right? And then here, then you have the client will receive and view. This is more or less the process of the IoT client, uh, the remote monitoring IoT client. Is that right? Now for the controlling then, it's gonna be, the process actually is gonna be the opposite. The process is gonna start from the client. What's gonna happen is that we're gonna have a user interface, or user interface, GUI, or sometimes people call it graphical user interface, or GUI, right? Uh, graphic, graphical is usually for phone device or tablets, but it also can be, the same terminology can be used for regular uh, or tablet or regular uh, devices. So this GUI can then capture user information. And based on that, you, can, you have something called events. Uh, an event is, um, you know, when a button is pressed, when a, when a mouse is clicked, when, uh, when something is slide. And based on that event, uh, you can then program it based on event, or let's call it on event, then send a command. 
for example, in the, in the web development or in Android programming, um, events are a very integral part of the program. So in web development, you have something on, on button press. So when the button is pressed, do something. That do something, we could basically set a variable. Uh, we can then set the variable and then send it. That variable can then be sent to the client and then, uh, sorry, sent to the device. The device can then receive that send or set variable or send set and then send variable and set variable to cloud or to you know to device device Is that right and then on the device side right then on device well or in the device right what's going to happen is that we will have part of the program we will be waiting for it wait for the variable to arrive and once the variable arrives then it will be then function properly see in um, when when we work with the program in the last video we had some nice function called do it for uh, do it for basically means send this value to the internet well, Dweepy has another nice function called wait for. So Dweepy dot wait for. And wait for simply, as the name implies, is that it's waiting for a command to arrive to here, not to be sent. So then wait for is then waits for the for the variable, waits for the variable to arrive. And as soon as the variable arrives, then we can simply do a certain function. So if the variable arrives, for example, uh, is true, for example, then you can say close gate, for example, or you know, or do something else, do something else look. Uh, so yeah, so this is basically the infrastructure of the remote control method. And I'm gonna actually show you some of these examples in a program, but we won't do it ourselves. We will focus our attention when it comes to programming only on um, monitoring now remote monitoring is the most prominent use of IOT for the time being you can say it's between 80 to 90 percent of the IT applications are on monitoring it's quite rare or not quite rare but it's very less that we have remote controlling the reason for that is is that you see when you want to make a device that does remote monitoring it's one device and then any IOT client can view the information but if you want to do remote controlling, then you have to program several different IT clients based on the environment that you want. What does that mean? It's actually, if I want to have people interact with the device, well, I have to, I have to program uh, a browser, uh, you know, internet browser client. I, I'll, I'll try to make that point one more time. So first of all, here you will have one device. This device could be your controller. Control. Is that right? Now, the, the client to receive information, well, this could be Chrome, uh, this could be Firefox, this could be Windows Explorer, this could be App. I mean, so the anyone who can develop this information or have this information can view the same information from you. But if you want the other way around, right, then you'll have to program these things yourself in order to allow the user to pro to interact with your device. Or you'll have to program only one of them and then limit yourself only to that. So that's why it's another sort of hassle to, or more work sort of thing to, to actually do it, uh, to do the remote control. So I'll actually show you the, the Freeboard actually does have uh, remote control, but it's very custom. Uh, it's only for custom made. It does not come with a core feature. You'll have to do extra work yourself. Okay, so let's go now and do program. So now that we are here, let's return to our program. And let's actually do this. So I'm going to stop this program for a second. Now, before we actually do this, um, I'm going to yeah, go back to Freeboard. And we're going to start from scratch. So you know what? Yeah, let's do this again. So before we actually go to the IoT client, let's just start from here first. There is something that we need to do before. Now, if you haven't yet modified your program to match mine, it's fine as long as it's broadcasting the same information. However, before we go to the client, you need to take care. Now, if you want to update your program to make it match my current version, I'll, I'll give you this chance. So first of all, 
uh, you know what let's do this one more time so first of all here is this part of the program I'm gonna you can pause right now and then uh, update your program okay then you can also pause your video right now and then try to uh, update your program to match this part okay we're good and then you can now pause your your video right now and then update your program to match this part okay so now that you have done everything so your program matches mine so let's talk about this you see this part of the program right here is for usually is only for the local machine so it's not much or only to set the values the things that we're going to care about right now actually is right here which has already been set so the primary thing that you have to take note of before we go to the client is this first of all you need to understand the data structure this is called the data structure this is how your data is organized or your set of information is organized and then this is how it is structured your dictionary is divided into three sections water height gate status and unit state and the value of the water height <laughs> i kept the word height here let's change that level so water level is here uh, then the value of the level is right here the gate status the name of it and then the value of the status is right here and the unit statement is right here and the statement is right here and then you have this also need to be changed so right here I'm gonna actually change it right now so I'm gonna call it um, ENM uh, sim IOT Sammy. now once again do not use exactly this in fact uh, I'm gonna talk about this and why is it the case what happens if you actually use this in fact if you use this um, you know what I'll come to this point later but for now make sure you actually change this you can write whatever you want as long as you don't leave any spaces you can actually change this part right here if you want and put your name if you want or you can just change the whole thing but whatever you choose take note of it or after you you run it you maybe you want to copy it so save the program and before you go to the client make sure it's running fine it's running yeah it's a bit slow but it's running okay now leave it running that's the important part and then we go to the internet and we go to freeboard so freeboard.io and I'm gonna log in so basically for your case here you have to click on start now and if you go to click on start now then you're gonna be required to log in now I already logged in but in your case you have to log in for the first time so once you log in for the first time then you will be required to you need to register for free it's actually you need only name and email nothing much freeboard is an open source technology and it's for free actually not entirely free some features are for money but for your case for the purposes of the class today it's for free once again i'm going to give you a moment you can pause the video to go and register make a, your account on freeboard and then come back here okay so now you're here so now when you come to this page this will be zero nothing will be here now this is actually for me I have a bunch of boards because I w I've been working on free boards for years so that this is my very first one and basically this is the one we want. I'm gonna create a brand new one from scratch just like you so right here we're gonna actually create a name so yeah sure why not 20 ENM 2020 this name is completely up to you you can do whatever you want spaces everything is fine as long as you know what the what the what the what the name is uh, you just have to remember that this is the name is going to appear in this list so it, it doesn't matter what the name is so create new so enm 2020 so this is now the board okay so the first thing we need to do before you actually able to view the information is to link your client to your device right now your device is broadcasting information so the very first thing before you can actually able to see the information is to link in, link them together. So how you're going to do that is by coming here to the data source because we need to have the source of the information first. So click on add and then select time. And we're going to actually go to dweet.io. Uh, IO means it's an open source. So as you can see, there's a bunch of things here, uh, different types of I, uh, sources. But for the purposes of today, we're going to use dweet.io. And the reason for that is because we are using the dweepy library. So dweet.io. And then again, once again, name. 
Again, this name right here is any name you like. So ENM, I'm going to use the same name, ENM 2020. Now, this right here, this is the only one that you have to be careful of. The thing name is exactly this. You have to use exactly the same name. So I'm going to come back here again, copy and paste here. Exactly the same. Don't put uh, semicolons here because that will not count. You have to put it just like that. You see, the thing name is the key or the, the ID that differentiates your device from other devices. If you put anything else, the linkage will not happen. The key here is a password. If you want your, your, your board, the information they display to be private, only those who have the key can view it. But for now, I'm gonna keep it open. Make sure you select full payload. Full payload means the value plus the timestamp. If you do not use the timestamp, I mean, you can if you want, but then um, it's very useful for future work, for other things. So it's very, very useful to do it here. It might make the process a bit slower, but uh, it's fine. And then save. And then you wait for this. After you save and you wait for this, you will notice this show never. If this is continues to be shown never, that means it's not connected. But then as soon as it connected, whoop, here we go. So now this is now has been connected. What does actually this says is that the last time this information has been sent and then received here, this actually means that we'll be connected. See, this is actually broadcasting, right? And we've connected. So if the information has been updated. This is what actually it says. It has been updated. And this is the time right now. So it's 11 uh, in the morning uh, a.m. So now it's 11 one. So this continues to change. That means the information has been updated. Before you do anything else, make sure that this is working because you don't want to actually spend a lot of time here only to realize that this is not connected. If your device, if you never see the time changes or if the time has stopped, let's say, for example, you are now, we are now at 3 p.m. But the last, and your program is running, but then this is still a.m. in the morning. It means it's not been updated for hours. That means obviously something has happened. Several reasons why this could happen. You, perhaps you essentially um, put the wrong thing name or the internet connection has dropped either between your client or at the device. So make sure you double check the connection as well as the thing name. Now check this out. You can actually have multiple devices sending the information to here. And this is a lovely thing about IoT. You see in this diagram here, we assume that it's just one device sends information to the client. Actually, this is not accurate. We could have a million devices sending information to the same client. That's no problem. Or one device sending information to multiple clients that also work or multiple to multiple. All of these combinations work. So if you have two devices, or if you would like to add a device from your friend, yeah, sure, no problem. If you'd like to display the information from your device. In fact, if you'd like to display the information from my device right now, do the same thing, and then basically put the name you want, let's say another ENM, ANM 2020, and then put exactly my code right here. You can then see my information at your place. But then by the time you're watching this video, it's probably not in real time. So I may have switched off my program, so you might not be able to see it. So I suggest that you do this with your friend. You can interact with your friend, make sure that they are broadcasting from their simulated program, and then you can take their thing name, and then you can view their information at your uh, machine. That definitely is doable. If we were in the lab, we would have done this already. But unfortunately, we are not. So that's why I said do not. Uh, wait, uh, I said do not copy uh, this because this is exactly my device. But if you'd like to, uh, then make sure that this is actually your unique name, and then make sure you copy. It. Okay. So now that we have done here, and this is actually uh, connected. So now we are ready now to do the second part, which is brought, viewing the information. You see, if you remember in this discussion just now, we said that you have to capture data. Oh wait, um, receive and then view. Well, we already done the receive part. We are receiving. That's con con done already. Then we need to do the viewing. Is that right? So let's go ahead and do it. So we're going to start here. Now, develop a console for advanced features that you need to code yourself. 
if you don't have any experience, excuse me, if you have experience in web development, so this will be working, this will be useful for you. Also, this is where you put advanced features such as remote control, but we're not going to do any of that today. Instead, we're going to do the, the basic features, which is viewing information. So a pane is a box right here. We could have multiple panes to actually use multiple information. Or you can put all your viewing in, inside one pane. It's up to you. So for now, I'm going to use one pane. Now, in the pane, you have uh, add. Inside here, you can add the widgets that is actually going to show the actual information. You know, in my previous video, or in earlier in this video, I have a, an indicator, some text display, as well as a light. Well, these are the widgets. Uh, text, the gauge, as well as the indicator lines. These are the ones I already used. You can definitely add more indicators uh, or more widgets. I will leave that for you in the, in the lab sheet. Um, I'm going to talk about the lab sheet requirements later. So for now, uh, let's start with the basic one. So now, which um, widget to use depends on your understanding of your data structure. This is very important. You see, some widgets will work only with some data types. They will not work with others. Now let's take a look at this. This is actually what? So this is water level, and the level actually is a number. It's basically a number. So since it's a number, a couple of uh, widgets work with it. We could basically display the value, or we could use it in a gauge. Let's, talk about, let's, let's do the simplest one, which is display the value. So the title will be uh, water level. level. OK, uh, regular. Yeah, this is the size of the display. And then the value. OK, this is very important. The data source, rather than trying to figure out where the data source is, we're going to do it from here. So pay attention for this part. How are you going to actually come and capture this water level? So in order actually to do this, we have to come inside the dictionary and then come to this section and capture this value. That's what it means. So let's do that. So we're going to do that from here, data source. And this is the name of my thing, which is ENM2020. So this is the thing. This is the created. This is the content. This is the whole object. And this is the timestamp. And this is the actual content. Content actually will contain this. So now pay attention to this. Water level, gate status, unit statement. OK, got it? All right, let's go back to the here and do this again. So data source, content, and check this out. Water level, gate status, and unit statement. These are exactly the same as the ones you see here. So water level, water level, gate status, gate status, and unit statement. In fact, if you change the spelling here, this will change. If I say water levels, for example, it will update there. But I have to rerun the program. And I don't want to go through that right now. You can actually experiment yourself. So essentially, what's going on here is that, uh, yeah, let's do it again. So content, and you can see that the content actually water level, water level, gate status, gate status, and then unit statement. This is the data structure. So we want the level. So you go to what the level and it will actually pick it up. So what's going on here is that in order to display the water level, we're going to go inside our data source, which is a dictionary, go exactly which is the content right here and then capture the water level. Or once again, we're going to go inside the dictionary, go here and capture the value. That's exactly what we are doing. Okay, this is done. This is the object. This is the content and this is the, the item. Include sparkline, yeah, sure, why not? Animate when the value change, yep, yeah, that will make it look cool in the unit. Uh, this is optional, but you can say CM, meter, millimeter, whatever you like. So, uh, yeah, and then save. And here we go, 4.7. And this is a graphic. This is what they meant by animate. And this is going to give you a nice graphic representing uh, the values changing. So this is the value change. Or if you would like to display this guy right here, so this is 5.8, which is the last value, and next will be 6.1. So the reason why there's a small delay here is because first the process starts from the local machine, which is right here. Then there is some delay from when the, OK, let's just go on here. So first, the device captures the value. Then it broadcasts the information. So when this goes here, there's a few seconds delay, or maybe one second delay. Then once the information is here, then it needs some more delay in order for the client to view this information. That's why there's a delay between the time when this is displayed here versus when it's shown here. 
So here we go. So once again, the value is displayed here, then is the then is displayed here. So it's 4.7, there's maybe a few seconds before it's actually shown here. The speed of this delay, it depends on your internet. If your internet bandwidth is being used, it's gonna be very, very slow. If you we were in a lab and we were all sitting there using unit and connection, then we were all using the same bandwidth at the same time, this would have been extremely slow. Sometimes to the point where the information doesn't even get there at all because it's going to be a traffic jam of data. So you can actually see how the information is actually changing. Uh, the reason why the, the path is going up is because the values are updated. So you see, we reached the 6.1 and drop again to 2.2, which is exactly what's going on here. Once we reach to uh, 6.1, then we start to 2.2 and then go up again until 6.1 and then start again. So that's the graphics you see. Now, in my previous video, I did not show this. It's because when I did yesterday, I did not include the spark line. I can actually just remove it now, and here we go. It's just the value. This is up to you. Obviously, it looks cooler when you add the spark line, so why not? So that's one item. So if you want, you can add another pane and then show the other item here. Or if you, can, uh, if you want, you can put another widget into the same pane. So apart from display text, <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to go and display it in a gauge. Gauge, you know, in a car when you drive, there is a speed gauge showing you how the, the car is moving. This is what the gauge is. And again, the gauge will also show the water level. So water level and value. Now, we, now we're familiar with this. So this is the structure of the data. So we're going to go to the content, and then we're going to go capture the water level. Units, again, CM. You can change this to meter if you want. Now this is important. You see, this is actually this is actually quite important for the gauge. If I leave this as it is, you will notice that um, nothing is moving because the value of the gauge is between zero. By the way, first of all, this is a gauge, and this is very similar to the speed. See, our values average or range between zero to one hundred. Excuse me, our values um, ranging between two point two or to six point one. This is the maximum value. This is the minimum value. However, in the gauge, the maximum value is 0 to 50. So this will always be somewhere here. Not cool. So instead, what we're going to do, we're going to actually come here and change this a little bit. So make it between 2 and, say, 7. Or maybe 6.5. Yeah, 7 is good. So this way, the values now is going to change. So now you're going to see more significant way. See, now this is significantly changing. If we haven't changed this, then the, the gauge will always be here. You know what? Let's just get back and show you the effect. So if this was 0 like before, yeah, and this is 100. So you will always see that despite the fact that the values are changing, it will always be here. It's not going to be moving because whether it's 2 or 6, whatever, this will always be very small compared to 100. So it's not really interactive. And I think the same effect is happening here. But for now, uh, this one we cannot control the value, cannot control the maximums and minimums. I'm not sure if we can, but for, or maybe for the free version, cannot. So I would like to change, that's why it's important that you select a lower minimum and a maximum that are sensitive to your values. So this has now become more interactive. Let's see if I can change this. No, we cannot edit the, the minimum and the maximum values for the spot. Plan. Maybe for the, for the paid version. Now, if you'd like to put this inside another pane altogether, it's fine. Uh, I actually prefer to do that. I don't like to put them all in one pane because it will be difficult to see all. Uh, it's up to you, really. If you would like to put it here, it's fine. Uh, the, unfortunately, you cannot just drag it there. So you will have to remove this widget, and we do this process again here. So widget, gauge, water level, and then we grow, grab the value from the structure, from the content, water level, and CM. And we put the minimum here, 2 and 7. So this way, uh, we have a cool-looking gauge. If you want to make this 0 to 10, also can. If you want to be decimal about it, it's fine. So now, now that this is actually a different pane altogether, I can then move it around myself using the mouse. So this is why I prefer to use the paints. OK, what else? Let's talk about another. I'm going to show you a few more gauges, or a few more, yeah, a few more widgets. And then I'll leave the rest for you to figure out. Another widget widget we're going to learn is uh, we already shown the text. We already shown the gauge. So let's, sh let, you know what, let's do the text one more time. But this time, I want to show statement. So data source, content, and then this time, we're going to go for the unit statement. 
There is no uh, spark line here because this is not a number, it's just an actual text. And there's no units here, so we're going to ignore this. And this is it. So notice how the, the pane is not enough width to, to display the value. Or you cannot move things around when you are here. So um, this is not good because I don't see the rest of the values. So in this case, you can come up. By the way, notice that there is edit and delete and edit and delete. This one is for the widget, but this one is for the for the whole pane. So I'm going to come here and change the width by adding 2. If you change the column to 2, it becomes wider. Oh, well, here we go. So now then, uh, so you can actually play with this uh, display, the, the, the placement of these panes yourself. You can actually put, uh, you can change the, the width to 3 if you wish. So save, so it becomes wider still. If you have more things to say here, then it's up to you to show it. Okay, cool. So one more pane, and that's it for this video. I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to add one more or final widget, which is the indicator light. The indicator light is, uh, uh, first of all, let's just talk about this. Uh, this is a number. So we were able to use text widget as well as gauge. And this is obviously text. Sorry, here. This is obviously text, so we were able to use uh, the text. You cannot use gauge for text. For example, let's just say for a second, right? Uh, I decided that um, I would like to use a gauge, okay? But in this gauge, I would like to display the statement. This right here. And let's see what happens. NAN. This is a programming code. It simply means not appropriate or something like that. So it means that if you ever try to use gauges or different kind of widgets and you see this display right there, NAN, simply means it's not valid or the kind of widget you're using is not valid for, this, for the type of data that you're trying to use. You see, we were able to display the text here is because the value of the height is a text, is a, can, is a number, can be shown as a text. It can also be shown in a plot. Also, the value is a number here, so we can use it on a gauge. But this, we try to display the, the, the text value, which is the statement. We cannot display a statement on a gauge, so that's why it gives you an NAN. I actually forgot what NAN stands for. So NAN uh, error or code. So probably not a number. Yep, so this is not a number, so that's what the error means. So when you see this, it means this is not a proper or appropriate way for to use this widget. So let's delete this. So now let's try now. So for the indicator, right? The indicator light actually, it's it's a lampu, right? It's lamp, and therefore it has only two conditions: on and off. Does that sound familiar? Only two conditions: on, off, true, false. Familiar? Well, this is if you already figured it out. Well, exactly what you thought. The indicator light is only for booleans. And that's exactly what it is. The indicator light is meant for Boolean, and that's why I chose the status to use as Boolean. So this is a, the nice visual way to display status is using a light. If something is on, then the light will be on. And if the something is off, then you put the light off, or true or false, whatever you like. So that's why we're going to put gate status. And visually, it's going to be placed the value itself is the boolean. So we're going to go there and go to content and status. Remember, the status was a boolean. If I go here and see the status is actually a boolean. So right here is the status. Now, what about these two? These are two are actually optional. You can actually tap it yourself. What is actually mean going on here is that when the light is on, what is that actually does that mean? What is, what is actually it, it means? Uh, you could type it yourself, or you can add it to the data structure. In fact, we could have actually went to the data structure and added it here. Gate status text, gate status text uh, for both cases. But I feel that this is redundant, because you can just type it yourself here. So you can, then you can decide, when the lampu is on, what does that mean? So we're going to say, when the gate, when the light is on, that means it's true. Okay, so if it's true, true means gate is open. Is that right? So we're going to come down here and say, gate is open and you can copy paste this and say here gate is closed you can type it yourself or you can put it in the data structure yourself it's fine either way and here we go so right now it's exceeding the level it's higher than five so that's why the gate is closed so we're good to go 
And then later on, when the value is changed again to something to below the limit, it's going to update. So now 6.1 is still closed. And then in the next value, it will be 2. Yep, here we go. So now the gate has opened. And then here we go again. Now, the last thing, uh, this is the edit form. This is only available to you when you log into your own board. But if you would like to show this to your friend, you can just copy paste the link and send it to your friend on WhatsApp or whatever. But then because your friend does not own this board, they will not see this icon and they will not be able to edit it. They can only see this. And uh, the purpose of this is that because it's open to the public, anyone in the world can see your information. Of course, the data will be upgrading or will be interactive if your device is running and publishing information. If it's not publishing, if you are offline, then obviously this will display the last accurate value. In fact, let's take a look at it. Pay attention to this. So, um, so right now this is 5.1. So the next value will change. So this is 4.8. So I'm going to stop the program. So I'm going to stop this program right now. And and uh, basically, uh, so. The program is not running, so how can we have value? So when you stop the program, the board is going to display the last value it has received. So if I actually come back tomorrow, or after a few hours later, it will still show this. In fact, let's do that right now. So this is right now is 11:20. Um, I'm gonna pause the video and come back in five minutes, or maybe it's, there's no need for that to see. Yeah, I'm gonna come back in about. If I actually came back later and then, oh, you know what, let's talk about something else while we, while this is happening. So let's re recap before I stop. So we actually did this part right here. We did actually receive the information and we did view. And um, now for the lab sheet for this work, you're going to have to actually do something similar to what I did. You're going to have to construct a device that basically builds sets of data and then broadcast to the cloud. Then you can actually then develop an, a free board IoT client that is going to display the information. But I would recommend that you try and use more widgets than the ones that I already did. So if you come down here right now and let's add a widget. So see, uh, I had a uh, indicator light, gauge, and text. That's the ones that I use. You're more than welcome to maybe add picture, or maybe add Google Map, H H H HTML, or even a pointer, or even um, something else. So try to use. Unfortunately, you cannot use this because this would require you to pay money. Uh, so you can try and use the others. Uh, or if you'd like to use more, if you would like to use the same in the widgets that I use, which is indicator light, gauge, and text, maybe you can use them in more features or more interactive features. Try to add the spark line, which is a widget on its own. Try to use a pointer. These two are, I'll leave it for you as well. Also in your lab sheet uh, on the other side, I only made one data set, which is this guy right here. Perhaps you could make other data sets. Maybe perhaps you have multiple sensors. So you can have sensor number one does this. Maybe if you can try to simulate heat sensor, humidity sensor, and you know, and uh, you know, and other sensors, and you can try and simulate those and display those separately. So definitely you can do that. I'm gonna explain in details the the lab sheet in on uh, on Moodle, and then you will make sense to you. Okay, so this is now 11.22. Uh, it's been about three minutes, and you can see this has not changed. It's actually five minutes now. That's because the, the, this, the board will display the last value. Now, if I refresh this page right now, I think this, this value is going to go. Let's just give it a try. Yeah, if you refresh this page, now this means that this is the nothing. There is no value that's been set and we are disconnected from the device. Or it's going to display the last value that you are actually shown. Oh, wait a minute, it's running again. Did, is my program running? I did not run the program. Oh, unless somebody is running, uh, or no. Um, my program is not running, so how come? Last updated. Maybe this is the last value has been updated. Yes, this is the last value that has been received, which is, this is the last values that has been actually seen by this, by this board. So that's why it actually updated it, but then it won't change again. So even if we wait for a while more, if we go to the full screen mode, and here we go. So this won't change. It's only going to display the last value that you have actually seen. To run this program again, we come back to the source, which is the thing, and run it. And it takes a few seconds to connect, and now we're good to go. So now 
the device down. I said this, yep, here we go. We're connected again to 2323 with the so that's it. We are done with the second part of the IoT client or the IoT framework. We were able to view the data. Oh, wait, wait. There's one last thing to talk about before we stop. You may have heard the term data analytics. What is it and why is it important? Now, data analytics is actually is very, very important. And uh, sometimes you see over here when we worked with our example, we only have one set of data, and the values is roughly about 10 values, and they represent just one sensor. This is very easy for us to understand or to, con to understand the concept of. But what if we had 100 sensors, each one of them have 1,000 values of data? It will be impossible for you to grasp the, the enormity of the data. So that's why you will need a separate data, a separate algorithm just to process the data. And that's why it's called data analytics or data, data analytics algorithm. So what's the purpose of the data analytics? Essentially, it's needed to process large quantities or large volumes of information that will be otherwise impossible for you to process on your own. So for advanced, see, if you have large volumes of data, if you have a thousand pieces of information coming in at the same time, how would you know which one is important than the other? How would you know which one is the noise, which one is the actual values? You need to process the information. You need to find averages. You need to find the standard deviation. You need to find a lot of other things that you cannot do with your with your mind, excuse me, with your mind only. So that's why you need this. Also, information numerically is far more difficult to grasp. But if you see it visually, like here, it will be easier for you. You see, when you look at a diagram right here, you can see where are the bottoms, where are the minimums. I know in our own data set, it's easier to see that because you only have about five or ten values. You can see that see that this is the minimum and this is the maximum. But what if you had 1,000 of these and randomly changing? So it's impossible for you to keep, keep track. But if they were visually plotted, then they would be easier for you to see the, uh, the data or the maximums and values. In other words, visualization. So you see, data analytics do two things. It's process large sets of information, provides you with visualization, allows you to understand the values. Now, sometimes we use advanced algorithms because the advanced algorithms will not only process or visualize data, but it will also make decisions based on the data. So let's just organize this. So uh, process data. Process means average uh, standard deviation, average standard deviation, plot, and so on. Is that right? That's one thing. What do you mean by process? Also visualization. Data visualization means turn data into diagrams. Turn numerical numerical data to visuals. Uh, we humans, we are easily, always oh, very easy for us to understand pictures rather than numbers or data. And the last part, decision making. And in decision making, we will need to use uh, advanced algorithms that you can see here. So all of this together uh, essentially is called data analytics. So data analytics actually can be broken down into three segments or three types. Data processing, uh, which is, you know, process the data and then come up with new data. Actually, we did data processing here. You see, based on this value, we were able to generate other sets of data, which is the status of the gate as well as the statement. So in a sense, this is a form of data processing. In data processing, we don't only find averages, but we also set other values. So set other values or create other data. So this is data processing. You know what I mean? Uh, then we have visualization of the data, uh, uh, so uh, which is turn visuals into uh, turn numerical data into visual data. So which is easier for us for to grasp and understand or conceptualize. So easier to concept, conceptualize, and uh, essentially uh, make it easier for us to understand the meaning of the data. And then finally, decision making or make decisions. Sometimes based on the data, we also made a decision, by the way, just now in our program, make decisions. 
You see, based on our based on the value of the data, we decided or we programmed this thing to close the gate. But what if we were not able to see this? What if we would not understand where is the values? Maybe the data was too much or too volumetric that we could not even understand where the maximum is. So in this case, we will apply uh, an AI algorithm, uh, fuzzy logics or any kind of, kind of advanced algorithm to process the information and then make decisions. And this is where IoT plus these advanced concepts come into place. Apart from data analytics, okay, once the data analytics does, okay, another question is, uh, so this is data analytics, okay, fine. One last item before we close the video for today is, it's right here. Okay, we processed it, we used advanced algorithm, we have the information in the client, what are we gonna do with it? So, apart from using the data, what actually is the purpose of the information? Well, this is the last bit of discussion, which is a smaller one we're gonna do or include right now, which is right here. So apart from viewing the data, what else are we gonna do with it? You see, some people might argue, you know what? Uh, okay, we viewed the information, it looks cool and all, and uh, I understand the concepts, uh, the AI algorithm make the decision for me, then what's next? What's next is right here. Apart from viewing, we could also use the same information for other technologies. IoT-based robotics is a new field starting in 2019. That's last year, and it's a growing field. It's where robotics are interacted with IoT, and therefore they use the IoT data to improve the performance of the robots. This is very much happening, a hot cake, so I suggest you get on board. Blockchain is something I'm sure everyone have heard about. It was the bomb in 2018, and it still is. Uh, but it's not about cryptocurrency. Blockchain is not just for cryptocurrency or cryptos. I'm sure you heard about cryptos uh, from 2018, but uh, essentially, uh, cryptos is just one example or one use of, uh, of blockchain. Blockchain can be used for other purposes other than cryptocurrencies. So blockchain, it requires data. Where does the data come from? Obviously it comes from the IoT framework, as well as other sources. We can also take the data itself and become a source of income. So the data itself can be used and sold as a commodity. The information that we have in our system could be useful for other companies or for other, some other, you know, other industries. They would pay money just to get that information. So therefore, we can actually package the data as a commodity and sell it. And because this information is continuous and regularly coming every now, every week or every day, it becomes a continuous source of income. And yes, companies, real companies have done this. It's called uh, uh, monetizing data. So yes, so money, oh, okay, it's annoying, so monetizing data. Some companies uh, do IoT just for this purpose, just to make money. So we can use IoT for robotics. So uh, IoT based robotics. This is a new field, 2019. Uh, blockchain. A uh, blockchain is based on information, or you know, and as well as cryptos, right? is based on data obviously coming from IT. So so IoT can provide. Can provide. Uh, before the monetizing can add here other technologies. I can't remember everything right now, but yes, other technologies that require need data. And then finally, source of income. Uh, the data itself can become a commodity, can be sold, and this is the concept of monetizing data. I know businesses that actually work entirely only to make to use data as a money as a commodity. I know companies who work as agents only to find those who need the information and then sell them the data. So essentially, there's a lot you can do to with IoT information. I'm gonna give you a moment to uh, to write things down. So basically, uh, we let's just summarize the discussion for today. So we talked about the different kinds of IoT clients. We have remote monitoring and re the different kinds, which is remote monitoring, what is the other one? Yeah, remote control as well as mix. 
Uh, yep, so. Yep, so let's organize this. So you can pause right here if you want to capture the differences between remote monitoring and remote controlling IoT clients. Okay, then we talked about uh, data analytics, which is right here. And the data analytics, um, it's because of large volumes of data, it's cannot, uh, the need for algorithms, or we can actually organize this here and say, because large volumes of data and therefore the purpose of it. Yeah, so due to large volume of data, you can actually, uh, if you want, you can pause this instant to write things down. Uh, this is extra, I already wrote that. Yep, you can actually pause this instant to write things down. And finally, you have the other purposes of data other than viewing. I you mean, know, so we can have, uh, we can use this information for other industries. And generally, there's uh, two, uh, there's generally three types of purposes for IoT data. So purposes for IoT data. So you can say, obviously, the first one is viewing. Uh, we already done that. And the purpose of viewing is to, why, well, okay, after you viewed this information, where are we going to use it? Well, we're going to use data to streamline processes. You see, as a manager, uh, streamline process means uh, reduce cost, improve efficiency. So uh, processes improve efficiency. So um, as a manager, when I view the client and I see that my system is inefficient, I can then improve it. Uh, then other than, so the first purpose is viewing, then uh, uh, in, um, can say other in other technologies technologies and that includes this guy right here robotics blockchain as well as other technologies right or or you can say uh, in or um, in collaboration or in, I forgot the word I use in my slides but anyway in collaboration or maybe it's in my slides so. streamlining integration yes the word that I was looking for is integration so integration, integration with other technologies, is that right? So by integrating IoT with robotics, we have IoT robotics. Integrating with blockchain, become more powerful. Integrate with other technologies, and so on. And then finally, the third information, which is monetizing data, which is source of income, which is right here. You get me? So this is our the purposes of in IoT data. Uh, there was one yes, this this part right here, which is the framework for remote controlling, which is the reverse right here. So you can then, uh, yeah, the, the, this was incomplete. So uh, yeah. So once again, uh, this is the client as well as the con remote, cli remote monitoring and remote uh, controlling uh, of uh, different types of IT client. And here is the, the purpose of data analytics and the use of or the types of data analytics uh, I think this part right here is not in the slides. I just came up with it, so you can add it to your notes. And finally, uh, the purposes of the data, which is three usually, which is right here. Okay, and so with this, we have actually completed our uh, video, video part two, which is IoT processing of the data. And this, you guys are ready for the next lab sheet. I'm going to add instructions on that lab sheet, what you guys need to do, and look for my notifications on Moodle as well as on the WhatsApp group. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.